painters turned off, please. Everybody have a good week? Yes. Yeah. Amen. It's been a good week, a wonderful day, and we're getting ready to move into uh, Easter weekend. And, uh, it'll be an awesome message tonight. Well, we're going to start out. We've got uh, a couple of testimonies here. The first one uh, is for the Christmas card volunteers. A lot of you participated in that program. We've got a lot of letters back to the letter writers, but this one just happened to come in in the last week or so. Greetings. God bless you and yours. I received a letter from Heart Prison Ministries giving me blessings and a greeting for the holiday. I thank you so much for the thoughtfulness of this letter. Jail is an incredibly lonely place. It is desolate and one can feel abandoned and forgotten. To get your letter, brighten my day, is my hope and prayer that God blesses you and continues to allow you to do His great will. In the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, I love you. God bless you in this new year. Feel free to write anytime. That is from Jesse uh, in Texas. And we've got a lot of letters like that. It's un you would not believe how touched these prisoners are by these Christmas cards and letters that go out. Most of them say it's the only card they get the entire Christmas season. So it's a very, very special thing for them to receive a Christmas card from one of our volunteers. The other one I've got here is just kind of a general testimony to kind of give you a little idea of what God can do with a hardened heart when He gets a hold of somebody. Heart of America Prison Ministries. I've been saved now for 12 years and have been in prison in one state after another for over 23 years. I grew up in a single parent home. My mom worked three jobs and was a local witch doing palm readings. Uh, <laughs> palm readings, seances, charms, cures, etc. So that's the way I grew up. I had five brothers, two sisters. I'm the second to the youngest and the only one still living. We moved to Oklahoma when I was nine years old. My mom married a truck driver and became a Christian when I was 15. So I left her home and hit the streets. I followed her steps doing the black arts for many years. I ran the streets and sold my body to men and women, did drugs, sold my girlfriend for drugs, and as many women as I could find who I could manipulate. I got married when I was 21 and was on the run from the law. I lived two lives, the good husband and the outlaw, the womanizer, the bisexual, the black magic, mixed with drugs and family life, consumed me. My marriage was over by the time I was 23 and I was on my way to the prison for the first time, spent the next 15 years in and out. Twelve years ago, I found myself in jail and I could not get out. I was being investigated for three murders and the federal government had me and was not letting me out. I received 280 months in the United States Penitentiary and 30 years in the state of Oklahoma and Colorado for the possession of firearms. I had made the big time and because I refused to house with other races, I was in segregation and would strike out at everyone. There was an old black man who would come to the hole every Tuesday, and the guards would open the bean holes, which are the little slots that you can slide food through, and he would talk and pray for the men. When he got to my cell each time, I would spit in his face and throw out the tore up Bible he would leave under the door each week. This went on for around six months until I was waiting for him to come around one day and I read some of the, page, some of the words on the page of the torn up Bible. The very first words I ever read in the Bible were on the torn up pages, Luke 9, 62. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. The old black man opened up my bean hole and bent down to receive his weekly spit in the face and smiled and said it's always just a matter of time. Wow. That day I had lots of questions. Jim the preacher took the time to answer them all. He told me he knew my mom 
and had been praying for my salvation for 15 years. I received salvation that day. The preacher went on to be with the Lord five years ago. My mom, 10. The rest of the family has passed on as well. But our Lord has let me lead all but one to him for behind bars. As well as all nine of my children and grandchildren I've met over the last 12 years. Our Lord allowed me to be released from the federal prison system 230 months early. Glory to God. And, all, and all of my sentences for the state of Oklahoma and Colorado ended at the same time and turned out to be only six in and six out. I'm working on the six in now. Our Lord uses me as a soul winner. I was unable to bring my Bible from federal prison to state prison. I missed my Bible. It had the names of all the men our Lord allowed me to lead to him. And I'm asking you if there's any way you could get a new Bible, a good study Bible, is a great need. And I'm a serious student of the Word. That's signed by Charles in Oklahoma. That is such an awesome testimony of what God can do with a hardened heart. Uh, you know, and 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 the, and the proof that prayer works. Mm -hmm. Somebody prayed for somebody oh, that did. he didn't even know prayed for him for 15 years for his wow. salvation. Mm -hmm. Took a weekly spit in the face for six months, waiting for his heart to be softened so that he could be led to the Lord. Amen. So don't ever give up hope if you got children, friends, neighbors, relatives that look like hard cases. God can do it. Amen. Amen. Just be faithful in prayer, faithful in your witness. Amen. It's it's just it, we serve an awesome God. There's no other way to put it. So anyway, that's that's the testimonies we've got for this week. But I just had to share that one with you. It's just so awesome. Amen. Amen.